It was one of the longest Federal Executive Council meetings in recent history. Two days and pertinent resolutions were reached at the end. The impact of those resolutions on the Nigerian people will form the crux of our conversation today on the program. Meanwhile, we had a busy week in the nation's capital and we'll be bringing you those details shortly. This is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. Let's kick off with that update I told you about. What were the major stories this week from Nigeria's presidency? It's time for our Abuja wrap. President Bola Tinubu says West Africa must work together to defeat the hydra-headed problems of terrorism, banditry, human trafficking and poverty. President Tinubu said this when he received the President of Senegal, Basiru Diomai Faye of Senegal at the State House in Abuja. According to a statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media, Ajirin Gelali, the President advised leaders in the region to make their people the point of convergence, noting that the essence of democracy is lost when the people are not the focal point. President Bola Tinubu has sworn in two commissioners from Ogun and Oshun State as members of the National Population Commission. The two commissioners, Honorable Fashua Abayami Johnson from Ogun State and Honorable Amidu Tadese Rahim from Oshun State, were sworn in just before the Federal Executive Council meeting commenced in the Council Chamber. The short ceremony, which entails their citations being read and oath of allegiance being administered, was witnessed by the Vice President Kashim Shatima, the Chief of Staff to the President Femik Bajabi Amila, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation George Akume, Cabinet Ministers and other government officials. President Bola Tinubu has called for collective efforts to address the challenge of gender-based violence and gender inequality across African countries. He made the call at the launch of the hashtag We Are Equal campaign at the Banquet Hall of the State House Abuja, attended by first ladies from various African countries. President Tinubu says the administration is determined to promote the education of the girl child through various programs and policies of government. According to him, every child, including the girl child, deserves access to quality education and health care in addition to other opportunities. The Minister of Aviation and Aerospace, Festus Kiamu, says payment for access to airports across the country is now compulsory for all including individuals claiming to be very important persons, VIPs. Speaking after the Federal Executive Council meeting, the minister said the practice whereby these individuals are given complimentary e-tax has resulted in significant loss for the aviation sector, running into billions of naira. It is inconceivable that in our country it is the VIPs that don't pay for services, but it is the poor men that pay for services. The VIPs who are supposed to have money don't pay for services but they compare poor men to pay for services. And I said, no. So I got my team together. I said, we need the backing of council to compel everybody. In fact, guess what? My, our memo says, with the exception of the president and the vice president, the president overruled me. He said he and the vice president will pay. He said everybody. This has led in the past to loss of billions of naira, not millions, billions of naira annually because of this. And yet, our airport infrastructure, you know they are decaying. I am helpless. I'm looking for concessionaires. I'm looking for help for decaying infrastructure. And they will be the first to cry out, these same VIPs, why are your toilets like this? Why are your toilets smelling? Why can't you do this? Why? They are the same poor. But they don't pay for the services. So, if we want improved infrastructure at the airport, we must pay for services. The President of the Senate, Senator Gautil Lakpabio, has said Nigeria has a shared history with the United Kingdom and would value their input in strengthening democratic practice, not only in Nigeria but Africa as a whole. Senator Akpabio stated this when the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Richard Montgomery, led a delegation on a cuts visit to the leadership of the Senate at the National Assembly in Abuja. The House of Representatives Committee on Financial Crimes is urging the House to invoke and apply its full powers against Binance Holdings Limited to ensure that the firm appears before it to answer petitions alleging irregularities perpetrated by Binance Holdings Limited in Nigeria. The committee stated this at a briefing in Abuja while asserting that all relevant agencies of government would be invited to determine the extent of Binance's default and the relevant punitive measures. According to the chairman of the committee, although Binance has refused to appear before the public hearing scheduled by the committee, the committee has proceeded with its investigations which have so far revealed prima facie incidents of unlawful infractions by Binance, which include 
tax evasion, money laundering, enabling terrorism, amongst others. Meanwhile, the committee is also insisting that Binance Holdings Limited should be made to tender an apology to the House for seeking to denigrate its integrity following allegations of soliciting bribes. Welcome back. The Federal Executive Council announced after an intense two-day meeting that the cybersecurity levy of 0.5% has been suspended. Many Nigerians were hoping for an outright cancellation, but baby steps. And that's not the only resolution reached. In our focus on the nation's capital, we take a deep dive into all that happened at this extraordinary Federal Executive Council meeting, which was held at the Council Chambers of the State House in Abuja. Please watch this. After day one of the Federal Executive Council meeting, a statement was released to the media, noting that President Bola Tinubu has directed all government ministries, departments and agencies to procure compressed natural gas-powered vehicles as against the traditional petrol-dependent vehicles. Addressing members of the Federal Executive Council at the State House, the President had affirmed that there is no turning back in the energy reforms initiated by his administration and tasked ministers to diligently seek value-driven procurements of CNG-compliant vehicles. According to that statement by the Special Advisor on Media to the President, Adjurin Galale, President Tinubu's directive is in furtherance of Nigeria's effort to transition to cleaner energy as CNG-enabled vehicles have been adjudged to produce lower emissions, even as they present a more affordable alternative for Nigerian energy consumers. The statement added that the President remains committed to effectively harnessing the nation's gas potential alleviating the burden of high transportation costs on the masses while enhancing the standard of living of all Nigerians. The next day, cabinet members and other members of the Federal Executive Council converged again on the council chambers in a presidential villa. With the arrival of President Bola Tinubu, the meeting began. A few hours later, some ministers appear to brief State House correspondents on deliberations. Among the approvals from the meeting is one initiative aimed at infusing funds into infrastructure and the housing sector to stimulate economic growth. According to Council, it will also enable job creation and inclusive growth. There is available in Nigeria long-term funds to fund infrastructure projects, and it's within the uh, pension, uh, the in life insurance, and investment fund industry generally. There is offers of 20 trillion naira available, and much of it is in short-term funding that it doesn't need to be. Pension money is long-term. We are now able to announce, and uh, uh, with the full knowledge and um, support of all parties, that there will be an initiative to fund growth through investment in infrastructure, including housing, provision of mortgages, long-term mortgages, 25-year mortgages at relatively low interest rates. Where we are now, interest rates are elevated. Um, clearly, uh, uh, they are not the kind of rates that um, someone who is trying to pay a mortgage and trying to pay for the purchase of a house can afford, both in terms of the tenor of the money and the uh, rate. We're talking about give or take 12%. I would say give or take 12% should be the target that we aim at, something that's affordable. And um, it will take the creativity uh, of the whole, uh, all the stakeholders, government, the private sector, federal housing authority, national, uh, um, uh, Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, uh, Federal Mortgage Bank, um, as I said before, Ministry of Finance Incorporated, the pension funds, the investment funds, the insurance funds of life, you know, the long-term pools of money um, for life insurance investments. The whole ecosystem will need to come together to really get um, the housing sector going through affordability of housing. 
The minister also touched on government's efforts to encourage electric and CNG transportation in the country. The procurement is on. 600 buses are on their way, and as I said, they are not all f- to, be, to be purchased um, fully built. There's also a large portion that all the assemblers that are available in Nigeria have been given business, they've been given orders. Also, there are about 30,000 conversion kits coming in. Um, there is no policy of, in fact, it's the opposite. The policy, as was announced by the Honorable Minister for um, Information, is that not only is the intervention to bring down fares and cost of transportation and therefore cost of living for Nigerians as a whole through the government's presidential um, compressed national ga- natural gas initiative, but now it is a government procurement policy. At the same time, the attempt is being made to move to ele- electric vehicles. So the infrastructure for electric vehicles, charging points, it's a business. If you set up charging points, people will come and uh, patronize you. Similarly, there is a rollout, and I'm sure it will be announced uh, this month, there is a rollout of infrastructure, of places where uh, um, that are being tooled at the moment so that they can refuel CNG. Um, and of course, as I said um, earlier, there's, there's the opportunity, there are 30,000 conversion kits coming in. That's through the government initiative. And any private sector person that is enterprising can also bring their own. You can convert Kekemara, you can convert um, buses, you can convert cars to CNG. You just put the fuel, they put the tank in the boot, and you are virtually ready to go once they've wired it up. Council also considered the controversy surrounding the cybersecurity levy on electronic banking transactions. The position of government is that that policy has been suspended. That policy has been put on hold. That is the position of government for now. It is undergoing uh, some form of uh, yes, for some form of uh, review. It was reiterated in council. Uh, yesterday, you know that uh, today's council is a continuation of uh, uh, the council meeting of yesterday. So I can tell you, the cyber security levy has been put on hold. It is being reviewed by government. For now, it is on hold. The minister of power also spoke on the approvals to help enhance the national grid and power supply in the country. Uh, the first approval was actually for the uh, contract for procurement of uh, 10 numbers of 500 KV, 33 KV, 415 volts, acting transformers, and uh, 10 numbers of 33 KV acting reactors for the transmission company of Nigeria. The total sum of this um, procurement is actually about $4.8 million dollars and the 112.8 million Naira. Now the impact of this acting transformers and reactor is actually to enhance the optimum performance of the national grid as we have witnessed incessant collapse and disturbance on the grid. This will go a long way in strengthening and uh, expanding the grid. It will also protect all the electrical equipment and the personnel from the effects of grand vaults in her transmission substations across the country. And then lastly, to reduce the risk of electrical shock, equipment damage, and power outages caused by grand faults. Council also approved another 400 million naira for power generating sets, which they say will act as a backup for solar powered streetlights in the nation's capital. First approval is for the award of contract for the development of bus terminal and other transportation facilities in the capital territory. Secondly, is approval for the award of contract for the construction of Court of Appeal, Abuja Division. And number three, is approval for the award of contract for the provision of security operations and maintenance of backup generator 
for the street lights along presidential routes and Villa Gate 8, Federal Capital City. And lastly, the fourth approval is for the upgrading of Koetai Ebu Road in Kwali Area Council. And uh, all the necessary due process for the procurement procedure has been followed, and the uh, certificates of no objection have been obtained for all the awarded uh, approved uh, contracts. My guest today is Mr. Awal Rafsanjani, a Nigerian civil rights activist, executive director of the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, and chairman of the board of Amnesty International Nigeria. Together, we try to understand these resolutions and their impact on the Nigerian people, demands of civil society, the economic reality of the Nigerian versus the policies of the Tinubu administration. Please watch this. Mr. Rafsanjani, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you very much. So let's talk a little bit about this, this FEC meeting, this Federal Executive Council meeting. One of the longest in recent history. It took two days for a lot of these resolutions uh, to be met. Um, let's start with the first day when the president basically said, don't come to me with any requests for cars that run on petrol. I need you to bring requests of cars that run on compressed natural gas. What do you make of that one? Well, um, it's, it's, um, it's one thing for the president to say that, and it's another thing to see its implementation or compliance, because in the past, we have seen such kind of uh, instruction or, um, yeah, from the president, but uh, you do not see much compliance, you know, on such kind of uh, thing. But again, you know, uh, if the president, you know, um, healed to the uh, advice, and the call by Nigerians uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, government starts really looking at governance issues rather than just um, doing cosmetic and the meodetic thing. I think it is good for the nation. So I hope that the president will have the energy, will have the, you know, uh, commitment and the goodwill to be able to see through the governance challenges, deficit that we have. I mean, they, they did come to quite a number of resolutions at that meeting that took two days. Uh, one of them has to do with, um, you know, infusing funds into the infrastructure and housing sector to stimulate economic uh, growth. Uh, they said this is supposed to drive inclusive growth and job creation and things like that. So that's one of them. Uh, but I think oh, one of the biggest resolutions reached at this meeting was the suspension of the cybersecurity level of 0.5%. That's something I know you and many other people from civil society have been pushing for. Uh, a suspension. Did you want an outright cancellation? Absolutely. Well, so first, let me say we thank President for listening to us because uh, Nigerians came out in mass to reject that evil policy. Evil? Yes. Because it's exploitation, it's extortion, and it's not going to be accountable. You know, you remember the CVN said that this money was going to go to, to the answer. Uh, yeah, Office of National Security Advisor. Remember, they, are about, they were targeting about three trillion naira per annum. Now, this money will go to this place where there's nothing like accountability, where there's nothing like audits where there's nothing like anybody from National Assembly to come and say, open the book, let me see what you have done. It is going to be the same thing like security board, you understand? So how can we spend, how can we collect this money from the poor Nigerians? Many Nigerians that uh, this money is going to be taken, they are very poor because they have small money in the bank that they kept and it will be taken. Mark you, many of the big men and women they have run away even from putting money in the bank. They do all sorts of, you know, uh, thing with their money through either real estate or buying gold or buying currencies. So many of these big men, you don't even see much money in their account. That's what they do. So they have, def they have, you know, developed strategy to avoid even government putting satellite on them. That is why we are pushing for the real estate advocacy to checkmate what the real estate, you know, uh, guys are doing because they are helping to, you know, uh, keep looted ponds, you know, uh, 
on behalf of the looters. The same thing also, you go and see that they are buying gold and silver, wrists, watch, big, big things that, you know, you would not even notice. So it's not only the dollar and pound and euro they are buying. They are also now buying all these things. So they would not take this money to the bank. But one, of the, one of the area that many people, you know, were looking at with this cyber security levy, and you, you just touched on part of it, which is the fact that it wasn't going to help because many people figured, myself included, I, I, I just, you know, is it, is it going to help oh. stop the... Um, internet fraud. Internet fraud. Oh. Is it going to? If it's going to help, okay, can we have a conversation? I can help. I, I don't mind paying if if no, we're able to. No, but it is the responsibility of government so to make sure that, that the, the prop, your life and property and are assets secure. are secured. And that was where someone explained. Someone actually said, "Listen, if you're looking at security, whether it is cyber or virtual or real or on the floor or Boko Haram, there is a budget." For security, it is exactly. the biggest part exactly. of Nigeria's budget. Why don't they get the money from there? Exactly. Why do you, Why do you think they didn't think about that? Well, they see, like I mentioned, to they are desperately looking for avenues to gather money, uh, because already twenty twenty seven, they are already calculating. You, thought, you think this was just a oh, way to make my dear, money? my dear, what is it? Would they dare do that? Did to they the told you people? that? Have they gave you breakdown on what they want to do with the money? I just told you about three trillion. They are expected to collect from that. Have they come up with anything to say, this is what we are going to do with the money? Remember, the same thing happened with the subsidy fuel saving. They promised to Nigerians that they are going to use that saving to better up the life of Nigerians. Have we seen any improvement of our lives? Have we not seen more looting and more stealing? So that is why we have to work, you know, to support government through our constructive criticism to advise them and come up with other options. One other area, I think this was one of the final resolutions made at that meeting, was about the electricity sector. There's some kind of um, boosting that's supposed to be done because the grid keeps falling, something to support the grid and keep it running, uh, generators and, and things like that. Uh, we heard uh, the Minister of Power talking about that during the meeting. What do you make of that? Is that some kind of solace? To are, we not, uh, are we not ashamed that... Even Niger, that Nigerian government cut it on light, punish it for six months because of the problem they had. You know, Niger developed alternative to electricity. Uh, you during that period, after they suffered the initial setback of not having the light, they were able to come up with option, and they were having you know twenty four hours electricity. Now, if you go to Senegal. If you go to all these countries, you will see 24 hours light. Now, with the huge money spent under Obasanjo, you remember the money, the billions we've spent on electricity. Yet, we have not seen anything. So from Obasanjo, from 1999 to date, if you calculate how much Nigeria has spent in terms of uh, upgrading or improving energy or electricity, even if you are a building a new country, where there's no any grid or any infrastructure, the money we have spent is more than enough to What's generate the light. Now, the problem is simple. You have corruption with impunity. We have people who believe that they are untouchable and they want to continue to punish the country. And they, because you see them everywhere. They, are, they have occupied everywhere where you think changes can be done because they have enablers who promote them. You know, they are stationed in everywhere. And that is why our democracy needs to go beyond just election. Our democracy must address issues of development challenges. Well, that's all the time we have, Mr. Raf Sanjani. Thank you so much for speaking with us on Deadline Abuja. And good luck with all the work you have ahead of you. Thank you very much. Thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. Hang in there. I can't even begin to tell you how important it is that you stay calm, be more conscious of your spending, and try not to be so angry at the current state of things. But we must, for the sake of our health. And that's it on Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handles showing right now on your screens. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time.